Hello everyone, this video is going to cover uh, translations. And this is section um, 8.1 in uh, <clears throat> Integrated Course 1. <clears throat> but this is also in one of my other books, so in geometry as well. So uh, either way that you're seeing it, this is uh, a translation. So first of all, let's this whole chapter is on transformations. So let's make sure you understand what that means. So transformations is where you're going to flip something like a shape or or a dot on a graph. You're going to flip it or a line or anything, I guess, slip, uh, oops, slide it, not slip it, <laughs> slide it, um, or turn it, uh, uh, reflect, I guess I want that in there too, reflect, or turn a figure. So uh, overall, a transformation is where I'm going to take a figure and I'm going to flip it, slide it, glide it, move it all around. And we have special names for each of those types of moves. So the basic idea of a transformation is you take something and you're moving it, or you're reflecting it, or um, uh, taking the scale and changing the scale of it as well. So that's the overall idea. Well, I guess with the transformation, you don't change the scale, but we do cover that in this chapter as well. So let's talk about pre-image. What does this word mean? Well, pre-image, when they talk about the pre-image, it's what you originally had. It's like your original shape. Um, graph, whatever you want to call it. Point, uh, anything that it is. And then the image is what we call where it moved to. So if you took a point and you moved it from here to here, this would be our original and I moved it here, this would be our image where I moved it to, where it landed. So it is like your results or where it moved or results. Another thing I want you to realize is the notation for it because this part's kind of important. If I called this one point A, this one would be the image would have a little apostrophe on it. So it's the image of A. So basically you took that exact spot A and you made its image and you used the apostrophe and they use that notation all the time for the image. Another word that is thrown out there a lot is rigid motion. That is what transformations are. They are a rigid motion. This is where you um, preserve distance and angle measures when you move something around. So um, you preserve distance and angle measures. So you'll be asked questions, is this rigid motion, like is this really a transformation that preserves the distance and the angle measures? So if I have this shape of a piece of paper, I can move it, flip it, but I'm not actually changing the distance um, between like one point to the next. They all stay the same no matter what I do to it. That's the idea of rigid motion. Um, and then this section, 8.1, is on one of our transformations. This transformation is a translation. So a translation. And what we do with this one is we map all points the same distance the same distance in the same direction. And if you're not taking notes with me, you're probably not going to remember any of these definitions and you won't have any way to look them up quickly. So you really should have a math notebook because um, this is the first section in, in uh, semester B, so some of you might be new. You really should have a math notebook where you take notes from my videos or from the virtual nerd videos 
and you have those to use when you do the homework um, so you aren't constantly having to look things up and also when you write things out you memorize them better than if you um, just hope they stick in your brain all right so <clears throat> translation I take this figure and I move it left right up down I don't flip it or anything like that so this is what we do call a slide kind of you're gonna slide it somewhere up down and that's what you do so you every point goes in the same distance in the same direction basically you don't want to take that rectangle and smush it and make it a rhombus you want to keep it um, at the same shape and just move it to the left right up or down alright so um, remember our X kind of value kind of moves us uh, left and right and our Y value moves us up and down on a graph and <coughs> the notation for this that I have actually only seen in your book which I don't know they were lazy they use T for translation and then what they do is they go 4 comma negative 2 and this isn't really a very good oops I have my pencils erasers kind of dead so this is kind of it's not like a triangle it's like a parenthesis but it is a different shape parenthesis um, kind of like a greater than less than symbol so this is saying translate this 4 and negative 2 now notice the 4 is in the X position of a traditional point and the negative 2 is in that Y position of that traditional point so we're gonna move the 4 left and right and uh, negative 2 up or down so if it's positive you go in the positive direction negative you go in the negative direction so let's look at um, or let's write down what this what this notation it moves just so you have in your notes it moves uh, four to the right and it moves all the points to down because there's a negative on that too so let's um, look at a little another notation they kind of use so this is telling you what to do and this kind of tells you what to do as well so what I did is I say, okay, take the x value, add the 4. Take the y value, minus the 2. That's another way that we could write that. I kind of like this one better, and this one follows what you might see uh, a little more often in a different context, um, like ACT, ISAT testing, something like that. So let's look at my first example. What if I have the points 2, 3, and we'll call this point A. Uh, let's call point B, B uh, 1, 1 and let's call point C 6 1 and I'm not actually gonna graph these oh I can but I don't really want to and I'm gonna be lazy and not do it at this time so what if I say take all these points and negative 2 1 what am I telling you to do when I say T negative 2 1 with a comma in between so yeah I'm telling you this one's going to move you to the left two, up one. So uh, left two, up one. Another way to think of that is I take each x value and I minus two, and I take each y value and I add one. So let's take each of these points. I'm going to call them A apostrophe. That's going to be our image. And let's do this to each point. So we're going to take this two first, and we're going to minus two, which would give us zero. And then we're going to take this 3 and we're going to add 1, which would give us 4. So the image of A is going to be 0, 4. What's our image of B going to look like? Well, 1 uh, minus 2 is negative 1. And 3 plus 1 is, um, or 1, sorry, 1 plus 1 is 2. I looked at the wrong point there. Okay, 6 minus 2 is 4. And 1 plus 1 is 2 and this is C and that's all there is to it okay so don't make these harder than they are you're adding you're subtracting <coughs> now let's look at um, one other example All right, don't mind my little guys if you can hear them in the background. Okay, so another example, it might be written as a composite. Of functions, so let's look at those. So composite. 
or composition, I don't know, either composition of, let's see, translations. So when I, like I say I'm going to, um, a composition of something, I usually have two, basically. You're going to combine two things. So this one says, okay, take T, translation, two, one, uh, of X, Y. We don't have numbers. We're just going to call them X and Y. So you do them in general. What would this be? Followed by uh, the translation of negative 5 comma 3. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying, all right, do this, then do this. Move that thing, move it again. It's all it's saying. So, and we're going to do this of x, y on both. So, how would I do this? Well, you can do it two ways. I, I think the easiest way is just to combine these two. Or think of it as I'm taking the x value and I'm going to add 2 to it. I don't know what the x value is, but I'm going to add 2. Then I'm going to follow it by a subtracting 5. Okay, which we'll simplify in just a second. For y, it's like saying, okay, I'm going to take y, I'm going to add 1 here, and then I'm going to add 3 more here. So how does that look in the long run, or combine them? This would be x minus 3, and this would be y plus 4. And that's your final answer, so you have to simplify it down. So composite, just doing one, then the other. Um, you're going to be given points, and you're going to ask uh, to do a translation. Where does it go? Add the numbers, subtract the numbers. Or if, if it gives you a translation, what did you do? Uh, those kind of questions. So hopefully, um, if you need any more help, let me know. Good luck.